welcome to BizTax Inside Trading Show. This show is all about trading. Every week we will discuss what trading is all about and what are the required habits for a successful trader. We will also share trading ideas and themes to really help you make money. Now, as always, my guest for today is uh, uh, and, and co-host is Pang V. Lung. He's the founder and CIO of Track Record Asia. V, welcome to the show. Hey, it's good to see you again, Brian. Let's talk about markets. Okay, now speaking about markets, I want to dial into, first of all, tra- an, another anecdote around Trading 101. And it's something that you've mentioned many times before to me privately, which is basically not adding to losing positions. What is that all about, V? Ah, yes. So that's a, that's a good that's a good topic to talk about. So let's talk about trading. Uh, I think that's always a misconception that uh, uh, among many uh, tr- wannabe traders that uh, they should average down, right? Uh, I think yeah, so this is all around do- dollar cost averaging, right? Yes. That's what your thought yes. in terms of from a long-term perspective. Yes, correct. So this, 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 this misconception about dollar cost averaging, it assumes that, uh, that uh, markets always go up in the longer term, right? So of course, uh, when measured on a broader basis, right? Markets do go up in the longer term, the indices go up, but it, it, it has a survivorship bias, right? Many stocks that are in the S&P 500, but not no longer in the S&P 500. But if you look at S&P 500, of course, it's been trending up through the years, but it's because all the laggards have been taken out, the railroad companies are not there anymore, right? Uh, some of the companies that you know uh, that are dominant before, they have all gone, right? So, Essentially, that is why uh, there is a misconception, right? So, in fact, uh, you you can dollar cost average if you know for the for the longer run, it will go up, right? But you yes. don't know that for most, especially in specific companies. So, for specific companies, if you dollar cost average, you're averaging down. It is like rewarding uh, the the worst investments that you have. So, for example, when you own a portfolio of stocks, let's say you like you have five stocks, five, 10 stocks, right? So, you're essentially uh, investing in 10 management teams, right? Team yes. of uh, managers, CEO, CIOs, and etc. right? So, the ones that are the dollar cost averaging, the, the averaging down mentality would be you are taking profits on those that perform well, and then you are transferring the capital to the ones that are doing very badly on the year. So that means intuitively, uh, that means essentially what you're doing is you are moving capital away from your top performing teams and then allocating them to the worst performing team, assuming your assumption is that they will start to perform as well. And of course, if imagine you're running football clubs that way, right? You're you are rewarding your worst losers, right? Your teams that are like totally losing every match. You're like, okay, eventually this guy will mean revert, right? Uh, over the longer run, maybe you get one right, they will mean revert, they start to perform well, but most likely that they will be relegated to third division, fourth division, and just completely disappear, right? And that, that's not the right way to allocate capital if you want to be a winning trader, right? I think essentially what uh, legendary, uh, one of the most successful hedge fund managers of our time, our generation, Paul Tujajan says, losers, average losers. So I think you should, we should uh, adhere to that uh, uh, my, my philosophy is to add to winning trades, add to uh, companies that are doing really well, they continue to do well, they have business models that will persist through time, rather than just uh, average, averaging on uh, companies that uh, essentially are doing badly, right? It's not just about price, it's about trajectory, it's about momentum, and it's about future prospects. It's, it's not always about where it was before. Now, V, before we talk about currencies, could you just repeat again for the benefit of our audience, who that legendary stock trader is and where you can find information about him. Oh, Paul Tudor Jones. Paul Tudor Jones is, a, is, a, is a, uh, the, the founder of a, a Tudor Capital, which is uh, one of the most successful hedge funds uh, we have. And uh, he, you just Google his name, you'll find much of his wisdom online. And uh, he's been successful for, for many years. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's good to listen to him. Okay. Uh, on that note, I want to talk about really the US dollar and how the BRICS in particular are trying to move away from settlements in US dollars. Walk us through this uh, uh, V and who stands to benefit really from this move away from All right. US so in recent, in recent days, we have some really interesting news. Uh, we saw uh, China 
brokering a peace deal between Iran and Saudi, uh, which are basically quite mortal enemies on the on on the, on the on the on the basis that they have very very different philosophies around their religion. Uh, but uh, China managed to somehow m bring them to the same table and agree to a peace agreement. Uh, where, and we've also seen China working closely with Brazil to sign an agreement where they are going to settle their bilateral trade in their respective currencies instead of uh, using U US dollar as, as an intermediary. And you mentioned BRICS. BRICS is basically a, a grouping of uh, nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and uh, South Africa, right? So these guys are now trying their best to uh, create a basket of currencies to, to be used as a form of a reserve currency. So they want to diversify the savings, uh, the nation's savings from US dollars, from the euro, from yen, from sterling, uh, predominantly from the US dollars and the euro into a basket of their respective currencies, right? So they want to I, I think, I believe that the eventual goal is to settle their trades in their respective currencies to, to reduce their reliance on the US dollar payment system. And uh, that is, uh, this process has been ongoing for many years. They've been talking about it, but I think the process is accelerating now because since the start of the Ukraine war, uh, the Ukraine-Russia war, uh, China, uh, US has, has uh, uh, imposed uh, a lot of sanctions on, the, on, on Russia. They have confiscated private wealth, Russian citizens' wealth, as well as the official wealth of Russia and frozen their assets. And I think that is scaring non-US allies, right? What if individual, your individual wealth is being confiscated and, and frozen because uh, the US government suddenly is not in agreement with your government on certain aspects of geopolitical policies, right? So I think that is the key driver of uh, the geopolitical on this front, on, on, on currencies you're talking about. I think it eventually... The, the biggest winner will be China because being the second biggest economy of the world, they are the uh, biggest trading partner for many countries. And if they start to uh, make their currency available as a tra uh, settlement currency, the usage will increase the, 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 uh, the component, uh, the composition of uh, national FX reserves, currency reserves will start to allocate more to uh, Chinese Yuan as well. So essentially the, the trade is short on the dollar, longer on the Yuan. Yes, I think also that works on the, uh, on the basis that the Chinese government now is uh, working very hard to boost growth. They have now stopped, stopped uh, punishing the tax sector. They're trying to uh, uh, boost growth, of growth on various fronts, making peace with the tech giants, allowing them to continue with their development and uh, growing their markets. So I think uh, Chinese yuan should be a currency that uh, we, we, we are very positive on in the longer term. Now, the second theme of the week, really, uh, uh, V, is, is oil. OPEC Plus just announced a cut in production, which has led to an increase in oil prices. How do we as investors play this oil theme? Oh, cool. Uh, that's, a, that's a great theme to focus on, Brian. I think so, for example, uh, 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 oil has been doing really well since, uh, since uh, the last two weeks, since the massive drop during the COVID crisis. And, uh, uh, but for the past few months, it's been steadily going lower. And uh, this uh, OPEC uh, production cuts of, uh, in excess of 1 million barrels per day for the rest of the year is a surprise to many people. And it's also a slap in the face of the US government who is very uh, uh, against production cuts, right? They do want lower oil prices to, to ease the inflation problem that uh, they are facing. And I think it, it is also a sign of the erosion of uh, the, the dominance of the US uh, on, on policies around the world. But uh, more importantly as well, it shows the resolve of the uh, OPEC as well as Russia in uh, stabilizing oil prices and keeping it at a, at a level that is uh, most, uh, most favorable to them. So uh, how do we play this? Of course, in the shorter term, we'll see lots of volatility around oil prices, and it has been this case for some time. But I believe the main beneficiary of this, given that it's quite late in the cycle, oil prices has been there for some time. Uh, we are not sure exactly what's the next 20% move, but it's going to stay around here. What it, it shows is that there's a need to continue to explore uh, oil production capacity, right? So there have been uh, a, a, a good beneficiary a beneficiary is uh, the, the industry that uh, essentially is, is much like in the times of 
gold rush, you you uh, invest in those that sells uh, pickles and shovels, right? So yes. uh, Trans Ocean Limited, which uh, is uh, listed in the New York Stock Exchange with the ticker RIG, Rick, uh, aptly called because they essentially are the largest oil offshore drilling contractor. They lease out rigs for oil companies to explore uh, their, their oil wells and uh, they will benefit on two fronts. There's uh, going to be more rental of rigs and higher rates of rental. And uh, if you dive into it, you, uh, you do a bit of Googling, ask me from chat GPT, you'll see that uh, uh, rigs rental rate has been going through, uh, through, through the roof for some time. It's been going up and they are uh, capitalizing on this. They're doing really well because the contracts for, for rigs rentals are for multi-year uh, tenors and uh, they are really doing really well and they will continue to do well. Uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Now, Vias, uh, thank you very much for your insight. And that's this week's Inside Trading Show. Thanks for coming on the show, V. We've been speaking to Pan V. Long, founder and CIO of Track Record Asia on BISEX Inside Trading Show. I'm Brian Fernandez. This interview will be on our website, www.bistech.asia, as well as our social media platforms. It'll also be on our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in.